it's Chrissy again for part three of our communication and conflict management brief. I've talked a lot about communication style. I'm going to start going into the conflict part of our brief. Um, I want to start by saying that conflict is inevitable in any relationship that you have, you are due to have some conflict. If you don't have any conflict in your relationship, that also could be a warning sign. It could be a warning sign that you're using one communication style uh, too frequently um, and you're losing opportunities for growth. That's another thing to take into account. Um, so I like to remind people too that sometimes conflict is not always a negative thing. It can be an opportunity for growth and an opportunity for improvement. So just as an example, I have three historical scenarios here, okay? First is the Berlin Wall, if you need to look that up later. This happened, um, came down in the 70s, 80s, um, but this happened as a response to World War II. The civil rights, yes, we did not always have the same rights for every, um, for every person in America. And then drunk driving used to be normal to um, and legal for you to go to a bar, have several drinks, be inebriated, get in your vehicle and drive home. Um, and then with those problems and with those conflicts that we had, something that was uncomfortable for the country, um, we had reunification, we have equality within the workplace and um, within with the rights for, uh, for citizens of America. And then we have things like Mothers Against Drunk Driving so that we have lowered um, the rates that people have died from drunk driving accidents. So think sometimes that conflict is not always going to be a negative thing. It can actually be an opportunity and a process for improvements. Both positive outcomes at work and both positive outcomes at home. The other thing that I'd like to draw to your attention is, so I, my first job uh, was teaching in public schools. And I had students that were a bother. Um, they were difficult in the classroom. They had a comment for everything I said. Um, they were frequently challenging my ideas. And those students actually were very invested in the process. They wouldn't say this to your face, but they cared more than the people who had withdrawn from the situation. I had other students who wouldn't say one word. They would sleep frequently. They never turned in work. Those people were not invested in the relationship, not invested in the process. They had withdrawn from the situation. It's not even worth arguing with you over anymore. You might hear that before. I'm not even gonna bring that up with you anymore. It never goes anywhere. So think too that that behind someone who's having con that you're having conflict with, there's probably actually quite a bit of passion underneath that, maybe care. Um, so remind yourself of this when you're feeling in an uncomfortable situation like a conflict, that that is actually um, someone who's invested and someone who is passionate. Um, so there's, I'm gonna flip back to communication for just a little bit. There are four communication styles that I wanna bring to your attention, aggressive, passive aggressive, passive, and assertive. Now think of for yourself which communication style you typically use. Which one do you normally use? And I'm not here actually to paint these as good or bad. I want you to mostly think about which one is best for the situation that you're currently in. So sometimes when I teach this, we actually use candy. We use uh, Red Hots or Jawbreakers. We use um, Sour Patch Kids, because they start off sour and they get sweet at the end. Um, marshmallows, because they're very bendable, they don't have a lot of structure. And then this one we use M&Ms. And the reason we use that is to kind of say, at any different time, you might need to use a different kind of communication style. So for example, if my child is getting ready to run out into the street, or I see somebody getting ready to, a pedestrian getting ready to hit, get hit by a car, I'm not gonna say, oh, it, hey, if you don't mind, you need to move, or it would be really nice if you just, this one here, it would be nice if you just got out of the way, please. I need to be aggressive in that moment because I need to get their attention right away, okay? So think about this in the relationships that you have with your coworkers and also the people that you live with. It's not good to only use one kind of communication style. You need to think about what communication style fits the situation at that time. And then realize too, maybe there's a certain way that you communicate when you're feeling stressed, overwhelmed, 
frustrated, angry, you might flip to a different communication style. And it's not always, I get angry at work, so I'm an aggressive person. There are other people that you in your, that are in your workspaces that I get angry and I just suddenly get passive and withdrawn and I'm not gonna talk to you about it anymore. All right? So not all bad. This one actually has a lot of miscommunication. Passive aggressive is not always the clearest form of communication, um, but it's not always bad for the situation. I might be using, for example, I might be using passive aggressive communication if I'm trying to make myself less aggressive, okay? Um, this might be my pathway to being a little bit more assertive in my workspace or maybe a little bit more passive when I need to be listening instead of inserting my opinion, okay? So those are communication styles. Think about which one you use and which one is appropriate for the situation. Um, the second thing that we wanna talk about is conflict resolution styles. So I have competing, accommodating, compromising, collaborating, and avoiding. And let's just define these for a little bit. Like for competing, this would be you have an idea, but I have a better idea. Um, accommodating would be like, oh, well, you know, you know, you're the one who's the expert. I'm just going to let you, you do, you do you, okay? Um, compromising might be, well, you have some good points about that, but I also have some other good points. So let's see if we can meet in the middle. Um, collaborating would is a little bit like compromising, although collaborating means I feel like I'm completely understood and you feel like you're completely understood. And compromising, someone feels like, there's usually someone who feels like they got the short end of the stick and doesn't feel completely hurt or understood within the conflict. And then avoiding would be like that person that I said, it's just not worth my problem anymore. I don't have the energy to deal with you anymore. I'm just gonna avoid the situation. Or I could use avoiding in a more positive way, like that conflict between this person and this person has nothing to do with me, so I'm gonna stay out. I'm not gonna add fuel to that fire. I'm not gonna make it more than what it is. I'm gonna stay out, I'm gonna avoid it, I'm gonna keep on my merry way, all right? So think too about what conflict resolution style is useful in the situation you're in. I have two phrases that I think are, are useful. For example, I go into meetings sometimes where I am working with a um, superior. And so there's two phrases that I like to use that are helpful for us to be understood and for me to feel like I have some say in what happens. And the first one is, how can I help, okay? I see you have an issue. I know that you probably have the better solution. You have more experience. So how can I help? That's a really useful one that can, um, that can help in any situation. So I also actually suggest that for couples when they're having um, conflict and one person doesn't feel understood, just saying, how can I help can be really useful. And I have one more video. I'll give you the other phrase in just a moment and then we'll close out for communication and um, conflict management. Bye.